Good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live on TV3 with me, Martin Esiedu Date, coming to you live from our studios here at Adesawe in Accra, uh, top of the bulletin this afternoon. Tension in lower discovers youth demand investigations into chieftaincy crisis that led to the abduction of the lower disc of chief. Also coming up in the bulletin, key officers of power distribution services and the electricity company of Ghana, that's PDS and ECG, locked up in a crucial meeting over the appointment of ECG as interim operator. And on the international front, Rwanda closes part of the border with DR Congo, where an Ebola outbreak has killed more than 1,800 people in the last one year. Details of these stories and more, including business and sports and entertainment news, all packaged for you. Stay with us. We're starting from the story that broke a few days ago and the different arms and legs are growing out of that. So the Africa Center for Energy Policy, ASEP, uh, calls for the immediate interdiction of officials of the Millennium Development Authority, that is MIDA, to prevent them from tampering with evidence. As a new media briefing in Accra, ASEP indicated that government has frozen the bank accounts of PDS. Preliminary information available to ASEP shows that insurance provided by PDS has been declared fraudulent by the Qatar-based Akut Insurance. While this situation is under investigation by the government of Ghana, ASA believes that the contested document could have been deemed suspicious if MIDA and the transaction advisors, which is IFC, had shown the slightest seriousness and placed Ghana first. The requirement of bad guarantees prescribed under the concession agreement was changed to insurance bond to fit the weak capacity of the concessionaire to raise the needed bank guarantee. This was in breach of the requirement approved by Parliament of Ghana. While the bank guarantee can be called upon without recourse, the same cannot be said about insurance bond. The insurance bond of $350 million produced by PDS was signed by only the managing director of the issuer. It has emerged that the MD signature was forged. Persistent caution number three by ECG on the weaknesses of the bond issued was ignored. Perhaps ECG was seen to be a detractor uh, of the concession process and not a relevant party interested in properly scrutinizing the assets, securitizing the assets of the company. Eventually, it was this same ECG that managed to unravel the alleged misrepresentation or fraud. There is a need for immediate interdiction of the leadership of MIDA to prevent tampering with evidence that may, ne that may be necessary to support the case of the state. Government should seize with immediate effect the consumption of advice from IFC on the transaction. This is because the IFC has proven incapable of defending the interests of its clients, in this case, Ghana government and MIDA. Government should immediately audit the background of the beneficial owners of the local partners in the PDS. Uh, 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 consortium. In a related development, the minority leader in parliament um, has called for a public inquiry into the suspended ECG PDS deal. Haruna Idrisu insists that the development requires further probe. Ghana stood to benefit from about $500 million Millennium Challenge Account Fund, but on condition that it reformed its energy sector by bringing on private participation in its management by way of a concessionaire agreement. Government says upon intelligence it has stumbled on, there are anomalies in the deal. By the minority insist there's more to it. We are not out of the energy sector woes yet. Just some few minutes and hours ago, government have issued a statement 
On ECG PDS concessionaire, we warned you, we told you so. This parliament has been indicted that we do not do a diligent work. We are now being told by government officials that some documents and some information was obtained misleadingly. We demand a parliamentary inquiry into the transaction of that concessionaire under the MIDA agreement. Ranking member of the Energy Committee, Adams Mutawakilu, says government ignored the minority's caution to relook at the contract. The issue of this insurance was raised by the minority somewhere April that they had not provided insurance and what they provided later was paper insurance or paper guarantee not backed by liquidity or finances. This government is a lazy government not willing to work for the interests of this country. And a cancellation of the deal could mean some dire consequences. This parliament itself must hold ourselves if we didn't conduct ourselves well. We should accept responsibility. When documents come here, we will not thoroughly scrutinize it. We just say approve, approve, approve because we have numbers. Look at the embarrassment is causing the economy. Just this agreement. We demand that. Now, the Public Utilities Workers Union, POO, and the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, also want government to prosecute officials who did not do due diligence before allowing PDS to take over ECG. The Public Utilities Workers Union, POO, expressed concern over the issues regarding the concession agreement. Its General Secretary Michael Eduma Tanyantechi blamed the Millennium Development Authority, MIDA, for the breaches in the contract. They always say that a credible off ticker and uh, these developments coming up doesn't go to confirm whether they've really met the criteria of a, a credible off ticker that they themselves have been touting. So I think that MIDA must come and explain a lot to Ghana and Ghanaians. The General Secretary of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, Solomon Kote, called for the prosecution of officials who violated the agreement. Consequences on such investigation will definitely get some people to be tagged with. And therefore, those who entered into those agreements, what they knew, what they didn't know at the time before signing, they will also come up and give their version on the matter. And like we keep saying in Ghana, it will allow the laws to work. Okay, penalties that are associated with these things should be applied to get out the sanctions to the fullest. The Public Utilities Workers Union repeated its position that ECG is capable of power distribution. The development of the nation cannot really be attained without secured energy supply. So if we prioritize energy, we should be able to find money as a nation and do all the reform that is needed to enable the, all the institutions within the energy sector to operate uh, efficiently. The ICU, which agreed on the operation capacity of ECG, warned against power interruptions due to the ongoing matter. In these few days ahead of us, we expect the government to be more proactive in coming out and letting Ghanaians know that these are the issues. Power is so essential and anything to toy with it and to bring people's job and people's life into some kind of great inconvenience, which is highly avoidable, they should be able to do that to Ghanaians. We're staying on the subject matter a while longer because um, the um, former Deputy Power Minister John Jenapo is demanding that the concessionaire be compelled to account for monies it has collected from electricity consumers. He also called for the abrogation of the contract. John Jinapo, in an article in April, questioned the processes leading to the selection of power distribution company PDS. He alleged under the guise of promoting local content, the Ekofo Adwe led government altered the original agreement to pave way for the contract to be given to a consortium made of friends, cronies, and party apparatchiks, contrary to the original goals and objectives of the entire program, which was commenced during the previous NDC administration. Reacting to the suspension of the PDS deal, the former Deputy Power Minister said it is fraudulent and inimical to the state and must be totally abrogated. This is the time to terminate that agreement and hand over the entire asset back to ECG. Constitute a proper board, a competent, non-political 
But I'm also demanding that immediately PDS must publish the record now. Tariffs were increased from the 1st of July this year. It's been 30 days now. They haven't even published a record now. So when you are cheated, when you are shortchanged as far as your tariffs are concerned, you can't even determine that. He downplayed the argument that government must take credit for the detection of the alleged fraud in the deal. How can government take credit for that? You had an original agreement that had a condition precedent, which means that before PDS takes over, they must satisfy all those guarantees. The condition precedent are 45. Government waived 16 of them, including this very one. So it is the fault of government. Even though government is not expecting any judgment debt, John Junapo says there are some indications the matter would be legally pursued. I'm told the Americans are threatening. I'm told MCC is unhappy with what is happening. I'm told that the Americans are determined to slap some penal measures on Ghana because it is due to the negligence of government that has led to this challenge. He urged Ghanaians to mount pressure on government to put in place the right measures in the energy sector. Meanwhile, we have information that the Energy Commission is meeting with the leadership of the uh, pub, uh, power distribution services, that's PDS and the Electricity Company of Ghana, ECG. The management of both institutions are meeting with the Energy Commission. My colleague, Paco Siasari, uh, has been on the premises there and has joined us on, 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 online to let us know what has trans transpired at that meeting and what he can report. Paco, good afternoon and thank you for your time. Hello, Paco If you can hear me, I would want you to tell us what has happened or what has gone on since the meeting was called earlier today. Pago, see if you can hear me. Kindly reposition yourself. We can, we can barely hear what you're giving us, what, what information you're giving us. Uh, is my colleague at the Energy Commission and helping us understand. We are told what we have on authority is that the Energy Commission is meeting with PDS executives and ECG officials. Pakwisi, can you hear me? This is supposed to be a closed door meeting uh, and the meeting, if you permit me, was called at the instance of the boss of the Energy Commission uh, just yesterday after the announcement to hold on to the contract of the PDS, the boss of the Energy Commission uh, appointed the electricity company of Ghana as interim operators to take charge of the management operations of the electricity uh, sale license. Now, uh, this letter that was written yesterday by the board of the Energy Commission was copied to the Ministry of Energy, the, the Ministry of Finance, the Attorney General Department, uh, to the Chairman of the ECG Board of Directors, the ECG Company of Ghana itself, the Chief Executive of the Financial and Intelligence Center, uh, as well as the Chief Executive Officer of the Millennium Development Authority uh, here in Accra, Ghana. So this morning, as at 10 a.m., uh, we expected the PDF and ECG to be present, and of course, here at the meeting at the Energy Commission. The meeting started somewhere around 10 a.m., and essentially it's to help resolve all outstanding issues relating to the appointment of ECG as the interim operator. Uh, and this is essentially also to ensure that uh, electricity consumers uh, will not suffer any disruption in service as a result of this uh, situation. So uh, that's what we're currently monitoring at the moment. Uh, we're just going to stay around to nose around and to monitor events and probably get some information arising out of uh, this morning's meeting, Martin. But well, finally, what can you tell us regarding the body language of uh, the executives of both uh, entities and that of the Energy Commission? We know, or information we've also gathered indicate that the ECG executives are somewhat peeved and unhappy about this whole development. But from reading their, uh, their demeanor, what can you tell us regarding that? Martin, uh, to be frank with you, it's, it's very difficult at this moment to read the body language or demeanor of, of these officials. Uh, I'm afraid I'm unable to tell you what their demeanor means, but we'll just wait and see what happens after this closed door meeting. And I'm sure it's, it's going to end uh, anytime soon, and I, I can assure that I will bring you the very latest details on this developing story. All right, thank you very much, Pakwe C. Asari is uh, my colleague who is monitoring that uh, important meeting between the uh, ECG and uh, PDS at the behest of the Energy Commission. We'll keep an eye on that and keep you posted in our subsequent bulletins. Meanwhile, 
I'm sure you've heard from all the civil society organizations and think tanks, energy think tanks, and their comments they've been passing since this news broke Tuesday evening. And uh, we've been joined by Kojo Poku, Kojo Savapoku. He's an energy analyst and uh, wants to, uh, you know, help us understand some of the key issues that have arisen as a result of this new development. Kojo, uh, if you can hear me, thank you very much for your time. To start with, uh, there are already calls for officials of the Ministry of Finance and uh, government for that matter to resign and then also government should deal decisively with uh, executives of MIDA. Do you think that has anything to do with d resolving this issue? Yes. Um, good afternoon and I hope you can hear me well. Um, there is a publication in Ghana web and some of the platforms that, that I'm asking for the Minister of Finance to resign. The conversation was that the, your reporter asked the Minister of Finance, sorry, the Minister of Energy. I think the minority asked the Minister of Energy to resign. So your reporter asked that, should the Minister of Energy resign? And I said, no, because in most of the correspondence to do with this PDS, even the Minister of Energy was not copied. So if anybody is to resign, it's the Minister of Finance, because the Minister of Finance is the one who represents GOG. Anytime there is an agreement where government of Ghana is a party, the GOG component is represented by the Minister of Finance. So if anybody should resign, you should start from the Ministry of Finance and the MIDA uh, uh, institution, because they have not done well. MIDA in association with IFC have not acted and advised the government very well. So they should also be interdicted as ASAP has put out. There is another argument, uh, picking up from where you left of that, although we are a sovereign state, we were working with partners, in this case, uh, MIDA and then IFC, which is under the World Bank. And they advised and gave the all clear for Ghana to do the handing over of ECG's assets to PDS. So in this case, we were just taking, you know, an, uh, an understanding from what IFS and MIDA had given us that they've done due diligence and that we should go ahead and transact business with, with uh, PDS. Do you th still think that then we should... I'll, we should still punish the persons who are representatives of the government of Ghana, in this case, the finance ministry? Let me explain something. IFC is a transaction advisor. He only advised government. There are a lot of advice that IFC gave that the government did not take. I have documents which cabinet approval dismissed some of the recommendations that IFC made. MIDA is a government agency, though it is established in partnership with Americans. MIDA's first obligation is to make sure that the right thing is done for Ghanaians. Like I said, they have not done well and they've not acted well. But let me uh, explain the details. I have put out some commentary on um, WhatsApp and some other platforms. There is a clause in the agreement, which is 511. You see, this guarantee is about the lease payment security. It's like you, you're going to rent a property and, and the landlord says that, look, I'm going to demand but every month, I want you to put a security in place that in failure to pay me, I will call on that security if you are not able to pay me my rent. Now, there is a format in the agreement. The exact wording of the guarantee is in Schedule 10 of the agreement. Then 5.11 of that agreement also tells us what the payment security is supposed to be. Now, if you do not follow the letter of 5.11, it constitutes termination as point as point two of the agreement. So unless somebody signed the agreement, went and put it on a shelf and doing their own thing, but the agreement stipulates the rules of engagement between the government of Ghana and PDS. And every review to the letter. At any point somebody fell, I couldn't come up with a bank guarantee. And that bank guarantee in Schedule 10, Section 5, says that it should be confirmed by an international bank. If anybody felt that those conditions could not be met, all they had to do, though IFC and MIDA agreed to it, they should go back to Parliament and tell Parliament that, look, this agreement that we have cannot proceed, so we want to take out Section 511 of the agreement. Nobody on their own can now say that because IFC advised... IFC can only advise, but as a sovereign nation, as you rightfully said, we don't have to accept their advice. Mm. And if we accept their advice, then we should accept the consequences. Mm. And, uh, I mean, just before we came to you, we uh, came through with a story that the Energy Commission has asked 
PDS uh, executives and ECG uh, officials to meet them. We are told that is actually a crunch meeting currently ongoing. What are your expectations from that meeting, really? Look, um, I, I, I'm saying this. People are saying that this thing is a suspension. If anybody feels this is a suspension and they are going to come back from this and put the thing right, then some of us will proceed to court and basically ask the court to interpret the agreement that was signed. <clears throat> As per the agreement that was signed between the government of Ghana and passed by the parliament, the agreement as we speak now should be terminated. Now, there are steps for termination. So maybe the crunch meeting held by Energy Commission is to look at the steps of the termination. But there is no coming back from this. The government can say that it's a suspension because, yes, in the termination process, there are certain things that need to be done. But like I said, even if the government comes out and says that, oh, they have checked with the uh, insurance company in Qatar and everything is okay and is a PDS is to come back, some of us will take it to court because the agreement that was signed and passed by parliament has been broken. And mm. whatever they were holding on to, if this thing has not come to light, they were only holding on to straws because there are two parts of that agreement, Shadow 10 of the agreement and 5.11 of that agreement. Anybody who has a copy of that agreement can read that. It tells you clearly what needs to be done. And in failure, set Article 3 of the agreement terminates that agreement. And are we looking at paying any sort of judgment that are we going to be in trouble in any form if we terminate the agreement, which is currently on suspension? Not at all. I mean, um, we can cite fraudulent uh, issue of documents and the agreement is very specific in the section 11 that I'm telling, the section 511 that I'm mentioning, that if you are not able to do these things, it constitutes termination as per article five, oh, sorry, as per article three of the agreement. So, and one of the things that works in the government's favor is that they now detected fraudulent activities. So those are enough basis to prosecute and mm. to terminate the agreement. It's not a problem at all. Thank you, as always. Uh, Kojo Nsafuapoku is an energy analyst uh, helping us understand and put it to better perspective. The development and the different arms and legs growing out of the story that broke Tuesday evening where uh, ECG has taken over PDS. Uh, this is still made day live on TV3. Stay with us. We're covering every inch of the story and we will keep you posted. Let's swing straight to the western region now because the Ahanta Hene and pre president of the Ahanta Traditional Council, Otunfo Beidu Bonsu, uh, is calling on the western region security council, Rexec, to as a matter of uh, agency investigate and arrest prosecute persons who attacked the paramount chief of the lower disc of Nanakwesi Ajiman. Otunfo Beidu Bonsu also appeals to the youth of lower disc of to let go of any intention to retaliate as the police work to bring the perpetrators to book. On the dawn of Monday, July 22, armed men suspected to be working for the Omanhin of Upper Discove or Brimpon Himadechi besieged the palace of the Omanhin of Lower Discove, Nanakwe Siajiman, and beat him. A Ford Everest vehicle of Nanakwe Siajiman was vandalized in the process. The young men also set fire on several structures at Lower Discove. This game center close to the palace was not spared. Several houses were also broken into in the thick of the night and occupants subjected to severe beating. Both the young and aged had their fair share of the beating. The hoodlums went ahead to set fire on over 40 fishing boats at the shore of Lower Discove. In a show of solidarity for Nanakwe Siajiman and his subject, the president of the Ahanta Traditional Council, Otunfo Bedu Bonsu XV, led a team of paramount chiefs to visit Lower Discove. They were conducted round the paramountcy to learn at first hand the extent of destruction. Otunfo Bedu Bonsu XV appealed for calm. <laughs> I'm pleading with you all. You are my children. Don't seek revenge. Let's make lower this cold, an attractive place. In a show of support to Otunfo Bedu Bonsu the 15th, 
The Nzimam and the Council, made up of seven paramounties, also condemned the act and called on the president to take personal interest in the matter. The physical things are there for everybody to see. So we are here to, to really visit with them and, and also thank them for not continuing the violence as, as some people expected. But uh, we'll deal with the law and let the law take care of issues. Uh, I think that's, that's why we are here. But we are here as, as, as uh, not as enforcers, but just, just to encourage them to keep the peace and also let the law take its place. The palace of Omanhin of Upper Diskov of Brimpon Himadechi was deserted when the team of Paramount Chiefs visited. Nana Kwesiajiman is reported to be doing well at the Fian Kwanta Regional Hospital. The attack on Lower Diskov is said to have been triggered by the issue of who has the right over a community called Trom at Diskov. And we're staying on this subject matter. Let's cross uh, to the Western Region and speak to our Western Regional Correspondent, Eric J, who has just uh, sat through a press conference by the youth of, the, of Lower Diskov on this matter. Eric, what can you report? All right, so um, uh, Eric J. Well, what we what we do know is that the youth are saying that they want government to uh, intervene and make sure there aren't any retaliatory attacks on the chief and people of the upper disc of because, as it stands, there is some tension brewing in that part of the western region. So, Eric, wh what did they say exactly at that press conference? The youth of our hunter just address the press about recent disturbances ongoing at disc of. Uh, I have with me some members of the association for them to explain to us what today's function was about. Good afternoon and welcome to Midday News on TV3. Good afternoon. Uh, so you just finished addressing the press about recent disturbances at this school. Essentially, what do you want to say? Uh, yes, um, we just um, we are we are sending out um, some very strong messages to um, people of Discov in particular that look we need peace, we need peace, and we need unity at Discov. That's all that we are talking about. Okay. But we understand that the security agencies have already taken up this issue. Yeah, so we leave the security agencies to do their work. Um, they should continue with the investigations. I mean, they know better, at best, and they know how to handle the security situation. The the and. Um, we know and we have confidence that they can do more and we are calling on them that all citizens of this cove, um, I mean, must be protected, yes. So your call is for peace to yeah. prevail, right? Yes, that's it, because um, this cove is, is, is one place for one people. So we don't need divisions, we don't need things that will put us apart, we don't need any disunity. What we need is peace and that's why we're saying that in the face of this, this occurrence, we still need to let peace prevail because that is all that we have if we come to this cove this cove is made up of one people i am brace i can my family can be found both at the upper and the lower so if we fight amongst ourselves it's a family that is killing itself so the most important thing for us to do as discovians is to allow peace to prevail okay the uh, Tahini has spoken don't you believe in his words yeah we do believe in our chief and um we do believe in the Hatahin that is one of a uh, king that can help resolve this issue. In fact, we are rallying support behind him. Yes. Okay. Um, earlier, we heard that some youth at Lower Discove had wanted to retaliate. Has this come to your attention? Yeah, um, so, you know, once this issue happens, you hear a lot of things, but we are calling on them to restrain. Yeah? They should restrain. No one wins with this. No one wins. And they should, as a matter of fact, they should restrain a lot. They should restrain, and we need peace at this cove. We need peace. Peace. Since the incident happened, have you been able to get in contact with the victim, Nana Ajman? Uh, no. Uh, the, the thing is that we want to allow him to heal after we we'll go to him. We haven't, but we've been to this cove. I, have been, I was there on the Monday after the incident happened, and I saw what happened. It was it's something that is condemnable. We have to condemn it and say that nothing like that should happen in this cove again, never again. It's not, I mean, it, it's something that if you sit behind and watch, it's barbaric. It is not th something we'd want to have in this time. There's a time where we are saying that let's fi fight for jobs, let's fight for employment for the people. It's not time we have to be killing ourselves. So we've not contacted 
we want the issue to, to, to calm down a little. As we have released this statement, we'll follow it up with having a backdoor conversation to see how we, we, we can move forward. Yeah. Okay. What role do you want the Antahene and the Western Region House of Chiefs to play in this melody? I think they should mediate in. They should be mediating as a as an, as very independent body, and then they should listen to both factions. Yeah, uh, Kwesi Ajman himself and Obrin uh, uh, They are two fine chiefs in a hunter, great chiefs in a hunter that we respect. And for we the hunter youth, um, we are all that we are saying is that look, the two of them should come together. Kwesi Ajman and uh, Nana Himandechi should come together to help resolve this issue this thing was done by the british and the dutch we cannot relive it and we need to give way to peace and the two of them actually we want to see the two of them coming together to build this group we want to have a generation where people say oh so these two chiefs have united and they are they are putting this group on the high pedestal that's what that's what we're after we are not here to apportion blames we are not here to apportion blame. Whatever happened, the police are looking into it. We don't have problem with the police. We don't have problem. All that we want to see, these two chiefs must do whatever within their means, together with the House of Chiefs, together with the President and all the security agencies. They must bring a lasting peace to this group. That's all. How about you? What do you wish to see happen, yeah. es especially from the Antahene and the Western Region House of Chiefs? Like you said, mediate bring lasting solution to this let the two chiefs hold hands together and say we are together let's see them doing things together for instance like celebrating kundum together so that we see that when we the followers see that our leaders are doing that it it gives us that 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 confidence, confidence that okay. things will be well okay thank you we wish you well my name is eric here for tv3 news agonan kwanta in the western region and in the Greater Accra region, my name is Martin Esiedudat. Let's come in studio now and uh, go to one other story that uh, is going to take effect from today. So the ban on trawler fishing uh, has kicked off today. The one-month-long ban is expected to ensure that depleted fish stock in Ghanaian waters are replenished. And uh, we've been joined in studio by someone who has uh, extensive knowledge on what trawler fishing is and how this ban is different from the first ban that was given a few months ago, about two months ago, to tell us the difference and what this means for those who go uh, to sea with the uh, trolling vessels. Good afternoon, Rich Star Ni Ama Amafio. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Yeah, to start with, we know that a few months ago, government placed a ban on fishing and then now another ban. What is the difference between the two? Um, there are different gears and f different f fishing types. The two-month ban was for the artisanal, what we call the canoe. Can you, okay. This, these are non-industrial fishing activities. And so they had a one-month fishing moratorium, or what we call ban, for all gears in the canoe sector. Okay. This is for industrial trawl. And, and the industrial is, ones are those that go... They are the metal... You see, we have the artisanal canoe, we have the semi-industrial or inshore. They are mid-sized size. wooden vessels. Okay with inboard motors. The canoes use outboard motors. Oh, right. And then we have the industrial vessels. They are steel metal vessels. Oh, okay. And then we have the tuna, which is also an industrial vessel. They are bigger than the trawl vessels. Okay. So we have four different types of fishing activities in the okay. ocean. So the first one was for the industrial, was for the artisanal. Okay. Now you have a two-month closed season for the industrial trawl. Right. And this is not the first time. In November 2016, there was a close season for the industrial trawl. 2017, January and February. And 2018, February and March. So this is going to be about the fifth time there's going to be, or fourth time there's going to be Such a close a season for the trawl sector. Okay. That is an experience, their first ever close season on EDC. All right. Okay. And um, in the last few years that this ban has taken place, did you see a, you know, the aim we are told is to replenish the fish stock in the sea. Did you see uh, any substantial growth when you went back to see when the ban was lifted? Is fishes management go beyond just one management measure. We, we have a number of factors that are working against the growth of our fishery. Right. If the stocks are declining, it means that you need to look at what the cause of the, of the decline are. One factor that has been raised is that we have too much fleet. So the effort mm. is more than the, the resources that are available. 
The other issue is that you need to look at the other biological factors, including the ecosystem itself. The way we are treating our inland water bodies, which, is, which has a linkage, and then our estuaries, and then areas where fishes spawn, when we say they spawn, where they give birth. Mm. And then we need to also look at closures. Okay. We, closures, this ban is a type of closure. You can also have a type of closure where you identify an area which is very sensitive and say, okay, nobody should fish around here because okay. the fish spawns here or juvenile rest here. So you, you close you those areas. From, we call those areas marine protected areas. So you need to adopt different measures. And then you need to look at the gear regime. The gear is a net that they use. Fishing is about the gear. So if you don't have a policy that regulates the gear, how the gear is designed and all that, a small vessel may deploy an efficient gear but we have this given that and it will give a lot of problems. Right. So you need a lot of factors to be able to clearly say that you can measure your achievement based on the, the measures okay. you put in place. And yes or no, are your, your people you consult for, which is the trawler fishers, okay with this ban? Yes, they have. They, it, is a, it is more of a voluntary compliance. <laughs> it is, Whether you like it or not, you have to. No, okay. it's voluntary. The trawl sector itself proposed that we need to put in place measures. And that's okay. why 2016 okay. there okay. was okay. The, the, the ban. And besides, all the vessels are hooked onto vessel monitoring system. And so there is no way you could go Without. at sea. W once you, 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 you attempt, you'll be, you'll be found, be found out. out. Yeah. Okay. We've been speaking with Rich, uh, Rich Star Ni Ama Amafio. He's a fisheries analyst and then also a director of operations for Leif Fisheries, helping us understand the new ban on uh, fishing. This time around is a ban on trawler fishing. So there's a difference between the first ban and this one. Thank you very much for making time yeah. to speak with us. This is still Midday Live on TV3. Stay with us. We'll be back with more stories. Time now for entertainment news. In entertainment news this afternoon, an ever dynamic indigenous band, Kwampa, is two years old. Winning the VGMA Traditional Artist of the Year, uh, it, the group uh, has also said that it cherishes its career that it has charted. So far, the leader of the group, Asa, spoke to TV3 Entertainment. Kwampa will work hard to invigorate traditional music. <laughs> Formed some two years ago, Palm Wine High Life Music Group, Kwanpa, has become a household name. Kwanpa may be relatively new, but their effort in promoting indigenous music has been applauded by many. The group was adjudged the 2019 VGMA Traditional Artist of the Year. <laughs> Member traditional group owe their steady rise in the industry to constant practice and perseverance. The journey has not been easy. It started like some kind of slow, but then it picked up, and now I tell you, it has been great. Ghanaians have received us well. Panpa believes in the assertion that Africa has a very rich music culture, which is worth flaunting to the world. So for us, we are so excited that we are able to take Ghanaian palm wine music, spearheaded by people like Jack Wenimo and the rest, and we have brought it back to the people so that even the people of today, the current people, they can embrace the kind of music we do. At the ceremony to mark their second anniversary, the group vowed not to rest on their oars, but work hard to revive traditional music and churn out songs to help music enthusiasts reconnect with their roots. Fans are not just excited about their renditions, but believe Kwan Park is destined for greatness. See an amazing band, they're amazing people, they're very authentic. They have the real feeling of authenticity, they have the real feeling of tradition, the real feeling of Ghana. The fact that they've been able to entrench themselves strongly in the local market. And I'm confident that this band is going places. I'm so excited to have been part of the Kwan Pasusa story. And uh, I'm sure that 
anybody who experiences Kwampa will know that these are no ordinary guys. There's a band destined for greatness. Give me hope, give me hope. It's a great band, Kwampa. And the news just coming in just before we wrap up. The acting inspector general of police, James Opon Buenu, has assured the family of the police of the late police officer Corporal Agatha Nani Naben, the police administration will do all it can to arrest the suspects of Tuesday, July 30 incident, the dispatching of officers from the Criminal Investigations Department and the National Operations Department from the police headquarters are among measures towards arresting the perpetrators. Mr. Pombuenu made these assurances during a visit of the home of the deceased in Tamale. We have more of this in our subsequent bulletins and details of this on our website, which is 3 News. Dot com. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this bulletin was live from our studio here at Adesawa in Accra. My name is Martin Esiridati. Thank you very much. Do have a good afternoon as always. Stay positive. Bye for now.